We have been looking at STIs caused by bacteria, fungi, viruses, but today we're going to look at one that's usually caused by a parasite. Yes, a parasite, a single-celled protozoan. And this one, like chlamydia, it causes silent infection. Out of 100%, only 30% of them usually get the signs, meaning we have a whopping 70% of them that will not know that they have this infection, and yet they are passing it to other people. This is the reason why it's one of the major causes of STIs because you'll have the infection. You don't know. You're passing it to other people. They might also not know in time for the treatment. And only when it reaches one among the 30%, that's when they'll know that this is an infection. And now, tracing back all the trail back to the person who started off with the infection, it can be tricky. So this is the reason why you find that we have so many people with this infection without knowing. But we're going to rely on the 30% to know some of the signs that you can get from this infection. The infection we are talking about here is trichomoniasis, caused by a parasite that we call trichomonas vaginalis. Now, the name of the disease is coming from the name of the parasite. Now, we have several complications that can happen, one of which if you are pregnant and you have this infection, you might get a preterm baby, giving birth before the actual term, the nine months are over. So before uh, 37th week, you get your kid, or you're forced to go to labor, and the baby that you're going to give birth to might be underweight. So this is the reason why it's very important to get screened every now and then, especially if you have uh, active sexual life during this period, Actually, not even during this period. It's always good to have this screened every now and then. But in case you're not pregnant and you're a lady, fallopian tube might get blocked due to a scar tissue, and this can cause infertility. Now, how do you get this? When you have this parasite, you are prone to getting other STIs, including HIV. And the reason you're going to get HIV, mostly, I'm going to pick HIV, but any other can come because of you having trichomonas. One, we have two ways you can get this trichomoniasis. And this is the reason most of the people with HIV are usually encouraged to get this screening uh, every once in a while. Because one, HIV will make you to be immunocompromised. Meaning, at the end of the day, you are going to not have a perfect immunity that will take care of some of the uh, infections like this one here. So you end up having this infection during this time when you have HIV. Again, when you don't have HIV, you have trichomoniasis and maybe you get exposed to HIV. The fact that you have this infection causing inflammation in your vagina or in your urethra, in the penis, when this happens, your body will try to focus most of the fighting capabilities to where you have that information, where you have that infection. So this will be an opportunity for the HIV to select on the CD4 cells like uh, macrophages. And the fact that you have so many cells coming to respond to that infection, you're increasing the chances of you having a CD4 cell among the immune cells coming to respond. And this is what HIV will take advantage of. It will be grabbed and taken inside. And that's how you're going to get that infection. That's why if you, even other STIs, so long as you have an inflammation there, you're increasing the chance it's if you get exposed to HIV, you have a very high chance of getting that. But even if you are normal or maybe you have an infection, you still have a chance of getting that HIV. But when you have an infection, an active infection there, you increase the chances. Now, we said a fallopian tube can get blocked due to the scar tissue because now uh, it attracts other STIs. And if you have that infection, you're not treating it, it can lead to PID. And in a previous video, we talked about what or how PID can cause scar tissue and cause infertility due to the scar tissue that will form in the fallopian tube. Another complication is chronic abdominal or pelvic pain, pain in the lower abdomen. And this is mostly because we talked about PID, it's a major cause. Also, this infection can affect the anus, the mouth, and the hands. Let's go to the symptoms. And uh, like we said, only 30% of the people with this infection will have the signs and the symptoms. A majority of those that will show the symptoms will be ladies. Men, most of them usually don't show the symptoms until it's a little bit too late, but they can also get um, this infection, uh, the signs, after a long period of time of having this infection. Now, most of the signs and the symptoms will tend to appear between 5th day or 28th day after the infection by this uh, parasite. Now, this is after the exposure. Now, the symptoms are more common in women, like we said, and the researchers are not actually... Mm, very sure why it causes some symptoms in other people and not in others. Men, like we said, rarely show the symptoms, but when they show, the symptoms will become some very nasty looking discharge, a frothy discharge. 
burning after ejaculation or even a painful urination and uh, irritation or itching inside your penis. So you might feel that you want to scratch yourself but you cannot be able to do that because it's inside your urethra. Frequent urination and when it comes to women, uh, more, a little bit more of the women compared to men who show the signs and symptoms and some of which will be, like I said, in the men, a discharge. And this one will be either gray, yellow, green or greenish and usually frothy with a very unpleasant smell. Due to the inflammation, you're going to have an irritation around your vaginal area and also you're going to have a redness around that area because of this inflammation. Pain or discomfort during intercourse or during when you're passing out urine. And remember, uh, this parasite can also affect the lower part of the urethra in women, meaning when you have this infection, sometimes when you take uh, the samples, urine and the swab to the laboratory, they both can show the infection and it can confuse someone whether this is a UTI or an STI. So, but uh, the good thing is through microscopy, we can be able to tell uh, the infection by looking at the parasite itself. It's usually large enough to, to be seen. In women, still, you're going to have vaginal spotting or bleeding, sometimes even in between your periods, and uh, genital burning or itching. And the bleeding and the spotting that you're going to get, it's most probably going to be there after an intercourse. That's going to be very uncomfortable because it's going to be very painful. Now, redness and swelling due to the inflammation. Now, this one cuts across very high urge to urinate every now and then because remember we said it can also affect the urethra that uh, brings the urine and now when you're passing the urine you're going to feel the pain or the burning sensation because when the urine is passing it's going to pass through an area that's already inflamed so you're going to feel the pain now let's go to the risk factors and uh, kind of they apply to almost all the stis out there so trichomoniasis can affect anyone regardless of their sex but women have a higher likelihood of getting the infection because like we mentioned in a previous video they have a larger service area when it comes to their mucosa so these are large or a big uh, real estate that that uh, parasite can be able to live or stay and establish an infection compared to men. If you don't use condoms and maybe you have an untrusted partner or partners, if you have multiple partners, you predispose yourself to getting this infection. Let's go to diagnosis. How do I know that you have this infection or how does your doctor know that you have that infection? Now we have physical examination. They're going to do an exam in your vagina, in your pelvic region, and this is where if you have this infection, you're going to have a strawberry cervix. Now there's um, a tool called speculum that is inserted to make it easier for your doctor to see your cervix and in case you have a strawberry cervix that's an indication that you have this infection but it can be confirmed in the laboratory it should be confirmed in the laboratory whereby now your doctor will take a swab around that area or just inside your vagina and uh, it will be sent to the lab and again you are also going to provide that urine and it will be taken to the laboratory because remember like we said trichomoniasis can also affect the lower part of the urethra so when you're passing out urine it might come out with uh, this uh, parasite now samples will be taken there one of which is high vaginal swab the one that we mentioned and this will tell us whether you have an infection along your vagina and the urine will tell us whether you have that infection along uh, your urethra and this is mostly how we usually distinguish between STIs and UTI but there's a thin line here because it affects both actually most of um, STI, some of them, mostly the bacterial infections, usually also affect your urethra, so it can be hard to tell. But for trichomoniasis, we can be able to see it exactly on the microscope now without even having to stain. So I just take your urine, it's centrifuged, the bacteria will settle to the bottom, I take the deposit, and that deposit, when I look it under a microscope, I'm most likely going to see that parasite if you have it. Now we have cell culture, but we have others which are very popular, like uh, RDT, which is Rapid Diagnostic Test. And uh, this one checks for the antigen against this parasite. So your body senses the structure on this service of that uh, parasite or the bacteria or whatever. And then it makes antibodies against that so that it can be able to fight it. Because uh, antibodies are part of the soldiers. They are the tools that are usually used to clear most of the infection in the body. So suppose we capture those antibodies. We place them in a, in a let's say, a strip that can be able to pass that urine or whatever I want to use to test that. 
if I place them there and I code them with a color, once I put a sample there and I let everything flow, it means that in case you have a parasite, the antigens to this parasite, it's going to show a line. So this is an RDT. I think we should discuss more about them in the future. So keep around. Anyway, microscopy for urine and also for the swab is something else very important. But let's go to treatment, which is a little bit very straightforward as usual, because what you do here, uh, parasites can be killed. We have drugs that can be able to kill them completely. And like uh, viruses, whereby you'll have to suppress them over time. For the bacteria, you can kill them completely. For the fungal infections, you can do that, kill them completely. And also for the parasites, you can also do that. Now, I'm going to give you two drugs which are, let's say, favorite, although they usually give you some side effects, not not the serious ones, but um, they treat this infection completely. And uh, without the treatment, trichomoniasis can last for months or even years, and it can never go away unless you treat them. So you cannot sit down and wait for the, uh, for the infection to disappear. It's going to be there. So you'll have to use drugs to kill the actual parasites. Now, the entire time that you're going to be infected, you can give this infection to your sexual partners. And it's very important for all your sexual partner to be treated with you when you have that, when you discover you have that infection. It's very important for everyone, everyone you've had a sexual contact with to be treated. Now you're going to be given oral antibiotics. This medication will go and kill this trichomonas vaginalis. Now, one of the drugs is metronidazole and we have tinidazole. They kill it. And uh, it's very important for you to know that uh, we have several dosage. You can give in one large dose, meaning that you're going to sit down, have one large dose, especially for those pregnant ladies. You're given one large dose, and after that, it dies. Also, you can be given lower doses, meaning that you're going to be given drugs that are going to take over time, like for seven days. And after that, then you're going to have this thing cleared. Now, you're not supposed to have sex during when you're having this treatment and also one week. Make sure even your sexual partner, if you have one or maybe you have multiple, make sure each and every person is treated because if not, then you're going to pass all together the infection back. And it will be a to and fro thing. So you'll be getting the infection, you go to the hospital, get treated, you go back, you still get the same infection. So it's very important for you to make sure everyone is treated at the same time and you're not going to have sex during the time that you're going to have this medication. And to be safe, give yourself two more weeks after the treatment to make sure everything clears off. Now, very important when you're taking the drugs, make sure you don't drink any alcohol within the first 24 hours after taking the metronidazole or the first 72 hours if you're taking tinidazole. It can cause severe nausea and also vomiting. Now we have side effects of the complication that will come with the drugs and uh, one of which is having severe nausea, uh, vomiting. Sometimes you're going to have a, a rapid heart rate. Sometimes it will just resolve, uh, but it's very important for you to keep track of that. In case it goes overboard, you can go and see a doctor. You have heartburn. We have metallic taste in your mouth. And this one will be very notorious because this one will go for... You start taking the drug today or the whole week, even for two weeks, you can still taste that, have that metallic taste in your mouth. But remember... This infection will never go away until you treat it and you are still going to pass it to other people and you can still acquire this after you have been treated. So it's very important for you to make sure that this thing is treated as soon as possible. Thank you for watching this video up to this point. And uh, if you like it, give us a thumbs up. And if you like the channel, subscribe and make sure that you ring the bell so that you get to be notified every time we upload a video. In case you want us to extend the conversation, you can do that in the comment region and we can catch up there. See you in the next video.